Hey everybody, this is Boomer. Welcome back to another Slime Fun Tips and Tricks episode. This is part two of five. We are going to continue our path through all the power generators that are currently in the game inside of Slime Fun, whether it's Core or any of the add-ons. The first series we talked about eco generators, those that needed either wind or water. Today we're going to talk about basic power generation anywhere from four joules per second on the low end up to about a hundred on the high end. So let's dive in. We're going to start first with the core slime fun solar generator. This is the basic gen uh, solar generator that you're going to need tons of. If you're going to go solar power of any kind, you're going to have to generate a lot of these. A lot of the late end game power generation in light expansion and infinity expansion are going to require energized solar generators, which leads you back to this one. So let's talk about this one. This one generates four joules per second. It does not carry a buffer and it works only in a day, it does not work in another. And so one of these obviously isn't a lot of power. But like I said, this is part of generating up to a higher level. So that's our basic starting point. And this is why it's so critical when you get going that you start generating quartz. Simply because to make these basic uh, solar generators, you're going to need a lot of quartz turned into silicon. You're going to need three for every one of those. Well, you need nine to create one of these. You need 64 of these to create the energized solar generator. So quartz becomes a key piece to this. Let's move on to generator number two. This is the bioreactor inside a core slime fund. Bio meaning it runs on biomatter. For example, plants. So this one, it, all the items that will run in here produce the same amount of electricity it's simply how long will it last so I put in a melon I'm getting my eight joules per second and it has a 32 joule buffer so as it's chewing through this melon it's showing actually how much generation of power it has now it does work in a day or night and it will work in another so the watermelon or melon really uh, lasted 16 ticks so eight seconds so that's a decent start if you happen to have like a big watermelon farm or a big uh, pumpkin farm. That's not a bad start. But we're still not getting where we need to move yet. Let's go forward here to the Dynatech chipping generator. Now a chipping generator runs off of the durability of items that are broken. Are not broken but aren't 100%. So, for example, a great place to put this, if you needed a little bit of power in an area, would be a nether gold farm when you are actively killing zombie pigmen for the swords they drop. That would give you a almost limitless fuel source. So, let's put the chipping generator down. And we're going to put a diamond axe that has lost one durability point. So this also generates 8 joules per second. It has a full buffer, and you can see this one instantly, it tore up the whole machine, right? That whole axe is gone instantly. Works day and night, and also works in another. This is why I said this is a pretty good machine if you need just a little bit of power, right? Just enough to, I don't know, whatever you might need to do while you're sitting there killing off pigment. Or you get a couple of those. If you're killing some of those farms that can generate hundreds of pigment a minute, Maybe you need two or three of these to keep going, but it's a great option in a small uh, or a small need. Moving on up, we're going back in the core slime fund, and now we're talking about the advanced solar generator. So this takes four basic solar generators to create, 16 joules per second. Now we're getting some serious power going here for basic machines to get started with. No buffer, works only in a day, and again, it doesn't work in another. But leading up towards some of the end game machines that will come into play where you're going to need it to be able to run some of the machines in another. All right, going seeing a core slime fun, we're going to talk about the coal generator. This one also runs 16 joules per second. It does have a 64 joule buffer. Nice about it, it works day and night, and it will work in another. 
Now, it doesn't mean you have to run coal. Coal simply gives you the most power. But it will take a value. If you look in your guide, you'll see all the items that can go in there and what their value is. So an Acacia boat gave me my buffer of 64 joules. Nice to know. Let's move on. All right, now we're going to get into another add-on, Infinity Expansion's Basic Solar Panel. This is the first one with any kind of serious buffer. 900 joule buffer. It generates 18 joules per second. It will work only in the day and only in the overworld. It won't work in the nether. I believe, uh, you know, I don't quote me on the end. I didn't test the end. But this is the basic starting point towards moving into the advanced solar panels as well as celestial and then ultimately void and infinite. You're going to go through a lot of these just like you're going to go through a lot of that very first basic solar panel. But again, for a buffer standpoint, when you need that kind of buffer to get you through the night, that's a really good starting point. Okay, back in a core slime fund, let's talk about the lava generator. Lava generator, in this case, I believe does run solely on lava. So we'll pop this in. It runs at 20 joules per second, has a 512 joule buffer, runs day and night, and will work in the nether. This is a pretty good uh, machine to take with you. Especially if you're in the nether because you've got a limitless supply essentially of lava. But even if you're doing it in the end to mine, uh, you know, ender essence or something else, it's a good generator to take with you and it's not too pricey. All right, let's move on to another plugin. Light expansion is just called generator. That's all it is. It's just called a generator. So this one also runs 20 joules per second. However, it does not have a buffer. Might help if I put a power regulator down. Uh, it does work day and night, and it will work in the nether. So again, a small little tool that you can take in the nether. If you're going to be there for a while, this is another great generator to take with you, potentially. All right, back in a core slime fun. This one is one that I really never run, the combustion generator. And, and here's why. We'll actually show you what it requires for fuel. It's actually very expensive. The combustion generator needs either a bucket of oil or a bucket of fuel. Now, fuel is simply refined oil, and if you've done any kind of geo mining, you know oil is, is at a premium in most biomes with the exception of deep ocean. And so from a cost perspective to build, while it's not bad, it's expensive to run. Um, I have Actually, the very first time I ever actually placed one of these down to test it was during this test. So while it does produce a good amount of power for what it costs, the fuel source is very expensive. And so from a feasibility option, this one's going to tie you down. You have to always be mining oil from geomining or at least turning your oil into fuel when you really need it for plastic for the Android. So while it's a good generator, it's probably not sustainable over a long period of time. All right, let's move on to the coal generator number two. Back in a core slime fun again. So this one runs 30 joules per second, has a 256 buffer, runs day and night and in another. This is again, the same as the other coal generator. It just has a little bit more power. It's a nice gen. Again, take it anywhere with you. All right, coming over here, we're back into another add-on, Dynatech. And this is an odd generator for me because I usually don't look at it where this could actually be one that would be self-sustaining over a period of time, especially if you're building like a cow farm or a, a pig farm or a chicken farm where you're automatically killing them and you're getting meat from it. It's a culinary generator. It runs on food. So we'll stick in some cooked beef. Generates 32 joules per second. Nice buffer, 256. Day and night, absolutely. And it will run in another. So this one gives you some options. If you've got a good automatic food source, it's a nice generator to have around with you. All right, back in the core slime fun. Where is it? Someone stole my magnesium generator. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll just pull one up. How's that? Anyway, so the magnesium generator is something that most people don't think of too often simply because of getting magnesium salt. That becomes the challenge because in order to auto mine it, you need to have Infinity Expansion's geo quarry. Otherwise, getting salt is a very slow and, and monotonous process. 
where you can't get large quantities otherwise. You have to do a lot of geomining. But when it does run, it's 36 joules per second and has a buffer of 128, runs day and night, and runs in the, uh, in the nether. So when we talk about the magnesium generator, again, it runs off of magnesium salt. Each salt lasts 20 seconds. So when you are geomining, if you get 15 or 20 salt, 20 salt, that's only 400 seconds. That's six and a half minutes. It might take you longer than that if you're using a basic geominer just to mine that much salt. So in this case, if you're using it in conjunction with the Infinity Expansion Geominer, then it's a great resource because you got to do something with all that magnesium you've got. All right, moving on. Slime Fun Core Lava Generator number two. So this one's going to generate more power. It does cost a little bit more to consume and make. 40 joules per second. Now we're starting to ramp up a bit. We have a great buffer at 1024. Runs day and night and in another. All right, let's get to our last three here. Dynatech. I love this little generator. The Dragon Egg Generator. Now, if you're on a server that only has one Dragon Egg, well, then this is kind of a pointless one, right? Because only one person can run it. Uh, but it does do a decent amount of power at 64 joules per second. You do have a 512 joule buffer, runs day and night, and will run in another. If you have Infinity Expansions add-on, there are ways to get the Dragon Egg. Uh, granted, it is going to take a long time. The odds are approximately one in a million every time it generates. Or if your server allows the egg to be regenerated, well, then it's a really good option. If there's only one egg on a server, I'm probably uh, going to look at different options because I'm probably not going to be the first one there. All right, back on the core slime fun. We're moving up on the solar generators. We're now to the carbon auto. Carbon auto generator requires four advanced, which is now 16 basic generators. 64 joules per second, but no buffer. Runs day only and will not run in another. But again, it's part of the stepping up to get to some of the deep core end power. And so we're going to keep looking. We got one more here. Now, we're going to end with Infinity Expansion, and I do want to talk about Light Expansion in conjunction with Infinity Expansion. A lot of people are fully aware that Light Expansion nerfs the power, reduces the power level of a lot of Infinity Expansion generators. And apparently it nerfed it so much it took it out of the chest. So let's get the Geothermo generator. Here we go. The nice thing about it is you just place it down. The, the Earth is its own power source. It runs 70 joules per second and has a great buffer of 3,500 joules. It will run day or night and it will run in the nether. Now, as far as light expansions nerf, it doesn't nerf it. For some reason, it actually buffs it. It actually doubles. So if you have light expansion nerfs on, this actually generates 140 joules per second. It's weird. It's not supposed to be a buff it's supposed to be a nerf but in this case it turned out to be a buff right now i have light expansion nerfs turned off and that's why you're seeing 70 joules per second so that's everything in tier number two these are our basic electrical generators that where you're going to be spending the bulk of your time getting started starting to automate some of these processes i would automate you know quartz as quickly as possible to make silicon and ferrosilicon of course you're going to need uh, and you're going to need a lot of glass. So as you move up, you know, and you want to go big, deep end, you're going to have to start automating some of those. If you're not going to build that massive of a base, not go that deep end, any and all of these generators, with the exception of possibly the Dragon Egg, if you only have one, again, if you don't have Infinity Expansion Salt, the Magnesium Generator is kind of a challenge. But other than that, a lot of great generators and a lot of great options. So I appreciate everybody taking the time to watch. Don't forget to subscribe and turn those notifications on so that you're aware of when part three comes out. But as always, when we're playing Slime Fun, you got to go Boomer or you got to go home. We'll see you later.